Welcome to the Feel Good Show. I'm Diane Moore with the Diane FM Morning Show. And this episode is You Need Sleep. Did you know that Tom Brady, he goes to bed every night at 8.30 and gets at least nine hours of sleep. The New England Patriots quarterback says he does it because he wants to be the best he can be. I think we can all agree we want to be our best, whether it's going to work at a construction site or an office, or maybe just being at home with family. So how do we be the best we can be? Sleep is arguably the most important part of a healthy you. During sleep, the brain strengthens memories and skills. And get this, research shows that if you're well rested, you'll have less body fat. Okay, so what happens when we don't get the sleep we need? Poor sleep has been linked to heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, and a number of other health problems. And premature aging is one of them. Getting enough sleep will actually help you live longer. So that is why we are talking about sleep today. We can even grab a pillow, get well rested right here in studio, take a nap. <laughs> We're going to talk to Jillian Dowling, who is in studio with me. Hi, Jillian. Hello. And Jillian is with Sleepwise. She is a sleep consultant. You deal with people of all different ages. And thank you for joining me on The Feel Good Show. Thanks for having me. So let's get to it. I guess the question that's burning in everyone's mind is just how much sleep do we need? Uh, well, I think it varies from person to person. Um, obviously, the, the sleep needs of a six-month-old baby... Uh, are very different than the sleep needs of a 19-year-old person or a 40-year-old person. So really, it, it comes down to age in a lot of situations. But uh, as far as adults, I would say we need between seven and nine hours a night. So how do we know if we're getting enough of the sleep that we need? If you're waking up in the morning uh, without an alarm clock or easily oh. with an alarm clock and feeling good and refreshed, then you're getting enough sleep. All right. So you don't have to turn in as early as maybe Tom Brady does, you know, to get that kind of sleep, but we can get some awesome benefits. What are some of the most common sleep issues? Uh, I would say in this, um, these days, a lot of it has to do with stress and maybe not taking care of ourselves the way we should. Um, Sleep is, is connected to every process in our bodies. So really, I, I mean, there's so many things that can affect your sleep um, and so many things in our bodies that sleep affects. So it's kind of bi-directional there. Um, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, is the sleep affecting you in a negative way, not getting enough sleep, or is something negatively affecting your sleep? Okay, so it could be anxiety or stress, for Absolutely. example. It could be grief, or maybe even just if you work shift work. Yeah, that's a big one. So how do we get to the root cause of the sleep problem? When I work with someone, it's, it's sort of like peeling the layers of the onion. So, I mean, I, I, take a, um, I have an initial intake form that someone would fill out, and then I look at all the different things in their life that could be causing them to not sleep well. And for some people, it's one or two things. For some people... You know, it, it takes a while to actually figure out what's going on by, you know, eliminating some things or focusing on one area um, and, and then which often leads to some other underlying issues. So how can we get better sleep? You know, what are the most important elements to getting good sleep? I, I think the number one thing, uh, and I say this a lot when I talk about sleep, is just valuing your sleep and understanding that it is not a luxury. It is one of the very basic human needs. Along with water and air and food, we absolutely have to sleep. Human beings, well, all creatures really will die if right. we don't sleep. So I, I think that a lot of people don't look at it that way and they look at, um, you know, they think about sleep as being this glorious thing that they get to do on weekends, you know, when their work week is done. Instead of understanding that, you know, it, it's it, sleeping is, it can be your superpower. Mm -hmm. And if you value it and you respect it enough and, and, you know, live your life in a way that supports healthy sleep, then, um, that's the secret, I think. Okay. So you have to put sleep as a priority. Absolutely. So then are there certain things they can do though in the bedroom to make sleep better? I mean, how important is it to keep your bedroom, you know, a sanctuary, if you will, for sleep and sex, you know, as opposed to maybe other things people do in the bedroom? The bedroom should be for sleeping. Absolutely. Um, and keeping it clean is very important. I mean, lots of things are happening as we're sleeping. So if you're in an environment that's really not um, conducive to healthy sleep, it's definitely going to have an impact. Things like um, having blackout blinds on your windows, um, even, 
even just wearing pajamas that you put on right before bed. Okay. And people laugh at me because I say I have transition clothes. <laughs> transition clothes. What does that mean? <laughs> so when I get up in the morning, I I change out of my pajamas and I put on like yoga pants or sweats or something. And that's what I start my day with. I get the kids on the school bus and then I come home and then I change into my clothes for the day. Okay. And then at the end of the day, when I want to get comfy, mm-hmm. I change back into my transition clothes and then pajamas go on right before bed. <laughs> so you don't want to be taking whatever happened in right. your day into your bed. It's gross. I mean, hygienically speaking, but also um, a lot of having a good night's sleep is preparing your mm-hmm. brain for sleep and putting pajamas on right before bed is sort of one of those steps that your okay. body uh, kind of really likes. So it's sort of like brushing your teeth before mm-hmm. bed, washing your face, getting for into sure. your pajamas. Yeah. So for me, when I get home from work, I love to get into some comfy sweatpants. But mm-hmm. you're saying that's fine. But then right before bed, change again. Yeah, don't sleep in them. Okay. Got it. So what about things like people who have TVs in their bedroom or their their phone in their bedroom or, you know, other things that are a bit stimulating? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, having those types of things in your room, the Wi-Fi alone, uh, there mm. are studies that are showing that just that um, being in your bedroom can have an impact on your sleep. Um, but also there is a blue light that is emitted from uh, your television, your laptop, your phone, all of those devices produce this blue light that actually sends a signal to your brain that it's not time to go to sleep. Okay. Um, so it actually suppresses the release of melatonin. And I know melatonin is a bit of a hot topic these days, but melatonin is something our bodies release um, on its own. So it, it just does that. And it's at its peak when it's time to go to sleep. But when you're sitting in front of your laptop or your phone or any of those kinds of devices, it's actually suppressing that melatonin and telling your body that it's not time to go to sleep. Hmm. Right. So what if you were to watch TV right before bed? You're watching a show, you turn it off and you go to sleep. What does that do to you? Well, it's, it's saying when you eventually do turn the television off and you're in the dark, your body is sort of in this fight or flight mode um, because you have no melatonin to send that message to your brain to say it's time to go to sleep. So your body gets confused. Okay. Like, oh, okay, now we're in the dark. Now we start the process. So that's going to take a bit of time to get to sleep. And what happens in that time when your body's now just starting to um, say it's time to go to sleep, you know, it it can be a little bit stressful because you want the sleep to come quickly and it's not happening. And then, oh, my gosh, I'm not falling asleep. I have to get up in the morning. You know, now I'm going to be tired. Now I'm only going to get so much sleep. So that's when that starts to happen. Um, as overtiredness starts to creep in. And you mentioned the Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So are you saying that we should, if we have our phone in the room and we've got, you know, it turned, should we put it on like airplane mode to turn the Wi-Fi off? Yeah, you could do that. Um, I would, I really like when people have like a, a recharging station outside of their bedroom. Okay. So I know a lot of parents do that with their families and I recommend it a lot. Just having sort of a check your phone um, area in your house. Mm-hmm. Maybe they plug in for the night, but, um, you know, somewhere that's away from the bedroom that, you're not tempted if you do happen to wake up in the night. And I know people do this all the time. If it's there, you want to have a look at it. Right. Um, so if it's not in the room, then you're probably a little less tempted to do that. Yeah. I know sometimes if I wake up in the middle of the night, I can't sleep. I grab my phone, but then it's a bright light. Mm-hmm. So now you're, you know, forcing yourself more awake. Yes. But, um, okay, I use mine as an alarm clock. So mm-hmm. I guess the option here is that I should be getting an actual alarm clock. Is that what yeah. you're saying? <laughs> I think it's the better option. But alarm clocks, too. I mean, that little bit of light that comes mm-hmm. from your alarm clock, even if it's tiny, right. if you come to the surface of your sleep a little bit, that little bit of light can actually bring you right out of your sleep. And you probably ah. notice how bright that clock is. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you look over at it, it it can really almost light up the whole room. Yes. So I recommend turn the clock to the wall. Okay. Turn it away so you can't see it. flip it upside it. down. Yeah, just so you can't see it. So the light's not bothering you, but you still can, um, you know, you, you know that the alarm's still going to wake you up on time in the morning. So obviously the darkness is important. You mentioned mm-hmm. blackout curtains. So is that a must? I think if you can have blackout blinds or curtains, it's the best thing. Um, having as much darkness as possible is the best thing for your sleep. Light and darkness are a big factor in how we sleep. Um, but for some people, it's, it's not an option. So a, a night mask will work just as well. Okay. How important is it to keep your room clean? Like what if you go to sleep and there's clothes here and there and it's kind of a bit of a disaster? Does that affect sleep at all? I think for some people it could. And I think that um, that would 
maybe fall under the anxiety category. Okay. I mean, dirty is dirty. Like mm-hmm. that's a hygiene thing, but messy and having your things all over the place. I think it's kind of maybe um, the way you've ended your day that you're bringing a little bit of chaos into your bed when you're trying to go to sleep at night. So I would say someone who's going to bed with a messy room is probably leaving some loose ends that could come up throughout the night. Interesting. Okay, what about room temperature? I've heard that you should sleep in a cooler room. Is that true? Absolutely. So our when we go into our stage two sleep, uh, our body temperatures naturally drop. Uh, if your room is too hot, it's going to struggle to do that and it's going to prevent you from sleeping. So what's the ideal temperature? About 70, 71. Okay, so is that somewhere like around 18 to degrees if we're looking at there? Uh, yeah, I would say about 18 or 19. Okay, all yeah. right. Now, what about routine? Is it important to have a bedtime routine? You talked about the transition clothes mm-hmm. making you have in your pajamas, but should we have a routine that we follow every night? Absolutely. Um, so I talk about a bedtime routine uh, when I work with babies, when I work with older people, you know, and everyone in between. So a bedtime routine is really, really important. Our bodies love consistency. Mm-hmm. They love, um, you know, shutting down in a, in a planned way before you go to bed. So right. I always recommend starting in the bathroom. It's not ideal to stand in front of a well-lit mirror, brushing your teeth and washing your face and then try to go to sleep. So kind of a gradual process where you're starting in the bathroom and then ending um, in your bed with your clean pajamas on, maybe looking at a book. Okay, yeah. So a book or a magazine would be a good way to wind down as opposed to looking on your phone with the bright light in your eye, which is probably what a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm guilty of that. So book. Okay. Um, And is there anything else we can do that will help solidify this positive sleeping that we need? Um, Like what happens if we wake up in the middle of the night? What should we do to help ourselves fall back asleep? Well, there are a few things you can do. Breathing is a a big one. Um, Breathing is the fastest way to calm your body. Um, If you're feeling a little bit stressed, which we often do, uh, and and I see that a lot, that's probably the number one complaint is waking up in the middle of the night and not actually being able to go back to sleep. And what do I do? Because sometimes you should stay in bed and you you don't want to be exposed to the light that's going to wake you right up. But at the same time, if you're just laying in bed, rolling around, being frustrated, sometimes you should just get up, get a drink of water, walk around for a second, and then retry. You mentioned getting up, getting a drink. What Mm -hmm. if you get a snack? Does that lead to bad dreams? Because I know I get some weird dreams after I eat in the middle of the night. I I think it's not ideal. Our bodies are designed to fast during the night. If you're hungry and you're really feeling like you need to eat something, then I would say don't torture yourself, have something to eat, but make a make a healthy choice. Right. You know, don't get up and eat a chocolate bar or drink a Coke or something like that. Oh, sugar probably wouldn't right. help. No. <laughs> so maybe have a glass of milk or, you know, something that, um, you know, is not going to be a big process of digestion. Like while crackers you're trying to or something. Yeah, crackers Slice would be great. of bread. Yep. Throw some peanut butter on it, maybe. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's wrap up then with that breathing exercise so we can relax, find our zen, center ourselves, and uh, find our ways to good sleep. Basically, you just breathe in for four seconds, hold it for seven seconds, and out, breathe out for eight seconds. So it sounds kind of weird, okay. um, but it does a couple of things. So when you're focusing on counting and focusing on your breath, the stressful thoughts really can't creep in. So it kind of protects you from that. But at the same time, breathing in and holding and then the slow exhale will actually slow your heart rate, um, which is also something that happens in your stage two sleep. So it's doing a, a few things, distracting you from stressful mm-hmm. thoughts, but also calming your body. Should you do this while you're lying down? You can do it anytime, actually. I mean, you could do it when you're sitting at your desk during the day if you're feeling a little bit stressed. Uh, It's a great way to reset and kind of focus and and calm your body. All right. Well, let's do it right now. I'm actually going to grab my pillow. Okay. (laughs) And uh, get a little comfy here. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Lead us in. Okay. So breathe in for four. One, two, three, four. And hold for seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale slowly for eight seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Oh, oh, sir, we're still here. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jillian. That was fantastic. A great way to kind of learn some things about sleep that maybe we didn't all know about. So thank you so much for joining me for my first episode on the Feel Good Show. Um, You need sleep. Thank you. Thanks for having me.